and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12 says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edify of the body of Christ. Now I'm going to Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And verse 15 says, And how shall they preach except they be seen? And as it is written, how beautiful are the foot of the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now my thought from that today, what the Lord gave me, he said, I'm going to talk about a gifted preacher. A gifted preacher. A man that got it all. I'm giving you what does say the Lord. He said he got it all. Now today, we celebrate the dedication and labor of this anointed man and woman of God. He said the fortitude that God has given him to continue the good fight and the dedication to stay in his course. Now there are times that said when life will throw you a curveball. And there will be times, ooh Lord, when it gets hard to fight. When your arms are tired from swinging. Sometimes it gets hard to stand when the knees are weak to stand. Sometimes it seems as though you are boxing giants with the arms of a small child. But is there anybody here who knows that with God on your side, nothing is impossible? If God be for you, now who can stand against you? No weapon but form the beast you shall prosper. Not that it will not form animosity, because animosity will form. And jealous gonna rear his head. People will walk away from you. And sickness will compensate. But know that it will not prosper. He said the winds of trouble will blow. Because people will talk about you. Yeah. Friends will walk away. Yes. They will criticize you. And the one that you started with won't always be the one you finish with. No. Yeah. Yeah. But I believe Pastor Lovelace, huh, is like me or mine. Yeah. And said, I cannot come down no. from this wall. Yeah. I am doing a great work, said y'all. Yeah. And there is work to be done. Yeah. Years after years of fighting the good fight, yeah. years of running for Jesus, yeah. you had to stay your course. Yeah. You done already stayed your course, you see. Yeah. Now the apostle Paul say, but I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, no principalities, no power, no things present, and no things to come, y'all. No height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God, who is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now there is something about staying your course. See, everyone who started this race will not finish this race. Paul, while writing it, he said, Rome to the church of Philippi, he said, I press towards the calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling it. Paul said, I press, which means there was something in his way. And he had seen trouble. He had stood before a gripper and pleaded his case. But he had become an enemy, not only to the Jews, but also to the Roman government. Yeah. Uh -huh. He said, I've been locked up yeah. because of my faith here. Yeah. He said, I went from the top of the world yeah. to the 
world on top of me. But there's something about being in the press. The Bible says that there was a woman with an issue of blood. And when she heard Jesus had come, she got into the press behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Now there is something about getting into the press. And the Bible says there was a young man who was paralyzed and couldn't get to Jesus. Because of the press, his friends took him on top of the roof and began to tear away at the roof until they could get to Jesus. Sometimes you have to tear away something to hear God. There's something about being in the press that will cause Jesus to take notice of you. And I believe this great man of God here has had to press his way through sleepless nights. He had to press through some sick days. He had to press through hurry and tragedy. He had to press through disappointment and pain. And there have been days that he didn't feel like preaching, but he had to preach in a house. Days when he didn't have the strength to pray, but he had to pray in a house. Now nights when he had to get up out of sick bed to go visit the sick of another. Days when it looked like the problem was already solved, only to have it come back again. But I believe that he had to testify today. I believe he was saying, God has been good to me. He has been a friend like no other. This grace has kept me and the mercy has helped me. When I thought I couldn't get up, y'all, and go another step, he left me. And when I couldn't lift my head, he was a ray of sunshine. And my eyes burned with tears. He dried my tears. And when I look back over my life, and think things over, I can truly say that I have been blessed. I got a testimony. There's something about being in the press, y'all, and pressing through, that will separate those who don't know from those who know. Those who have stood in the fire from those that walked through the flame, y'all. Trouble will separate the weak from the strong. To be in the press, it's to be under pressure, yeah. to, challenge, to be challenged on every turn. Yeah. You see, Job found himself in the press, yeah. and he said, for the things which I greatly fear is come upon me, right. and that which I was afraid of is come to me. Yeah. It is the press that will make you call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Pressing your way brings power and with it perseverance. Yeah. And I tend to believe like the woman with the issues look. And Pastor Lovelace said, Lord, if I can just get close to you, if I can make it to the house of the Lord and touch you, everything will be all right. If there is something about the preacher, he is a learned living host. While trouble is pressing you down, he is a listening ear where no one else will listen. He is a source of encouragement. Yeah. And a pillar of the community. Yeah. The preacher does not speak like everyone else. Right. He's, you say, I'm going through, y'all. Yeah. He says, you're on your way out. Yeah. You say, I'm sick. Yeah. He says, this too shall pass. Yeah. You say, I can't make it. Yeah. The preacher says, where you are weak, God is strong. Yeah. The preacher is always talking about what God has. Yeah. Now someone says what they can't do, yeah. the preacher says all things are possible yeah. through Christ Jesus who strengthens yeah. yeah. you. Come on y'all and walk with me this morning. Yeah. We're going to examine this text. Yeah. Paul says very clearly, how can they hear without a preacher? Yeah. See, the preacher is not just a man all just right. like you. He is anointed vessel of God yeah. and a messenger from the Most High God. Yeah. The Bible says that angels are messenger from God. Yeah. Your pastor is a messenger sent from God to Mount Moriah. Yeah. Therefore, he is an angel, y'all. Yeah. He represents God here on earth yeah. and he represents God's way of doing kingdom business. Yeah. Paul makes this one very clear. He says, without a preacher, the church is thankful. 
cannot hear the word of the Lord except they be sick. So you do not choose. I want to let y'all know something. You don't choose your pastor. Your pastor sent to you by God. Come on, sir. Like the Lord told Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the bed, I knew thee, and before I came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. See, God has put you in place in this house. Paul writes to Timothy in the fifth chapter, the 17th verse. He instructs Timothy to remember the elders of the church. He says that the elders rule well the common word of double honor here. He said, Paul said, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox, the tread, out the corn, yes. and the labor is worthy of his reward. Yes, In other words, he's saying, Love your pastor. Yes. He is worthy of every accolade yes. that you can give him. Yes. Yes. He is worthy of double honor to y'all. Yes. And what you make happen, let me tell y'all something. What you make happen, for your pastor, God will make happen for you. Yeah. I'm a living witness, y'all. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right. Jesus said, whoever shall receive a prophet reward, yeah. in the name of a prophet, yeah. shall receive a prophet reward. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 13 chapter, verse 17 says, your pastor watches over your soul, yeah. as he must give an account for you. Yeah. See, your pastor has to give an account for your soul. Yes, yes. Now he prays when you can't pray. Right. He fasts when you can't fast. Yes. He sees God for you when you are asleep. Yes. Thank God for the pastor. Yes. See, God's blessings are in his mouth. Yes. Now, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13 says that the prophet Elijah was sent to a widow woman mm -hmm. who was in need she needed a word from the Lord. Yeah. Is there anybody here who has ever needed a word from the Lord? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. She was down to a ledge and couldn't find a way out. But I heard, ha, I heard the Bible say, yeah. there is a word from the Lord. Yeah. He said, be ye the man of God yeah. and watch and see what God gonna do for you. Come on, somebody. Thank God for the preaching. Thank God for his word. Yeah. Now, Elijah said the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of all fail. Yeah. So you got to trust in the Lord and lean out to your own understanding. Yeah. God will make a way out of no way because he is the way. Yeah. Anybody ever had to wait on the Lord? Yeah. Yes, no family, no friend, and no one to turn to but God. Yeah. Anybody ever prayed and waited and nothing happened? Yeah. You found yourself like Hezekiah having to turn your face to the wall. Yeah. Ask the Lord, who Lord, what have I done wrong? Yeah. And in the midst of your trouble, there was a word from the Lord. Yeah. Get ready to get out of here. Yeah. got laid over the eve, you know. <laughs> Now there is a word from the Lord. He was sent a man of God when he got ready to start the human race. He used a man named Adam. When he got ready to move his people and give them travel grace, he called a man named Aaron. When he wanted to show his mercy and deliver his people, he called a man named Moses. When he wanted to turn a boy to a king, y'all, he called a man named David. When he needed a preacher, he called a man named Solomon. When he needed a weeping prophet, he called a preacher by the name of Jeremiah. When he wanted to save his son, his people, and he wanted to save his people, he sent his son. The Rose of Sharon, the little of the valley, the rock in the weary land, a bridge of the cold water.
from death, and the grave couldn't hold it. And death had to let it go, y'all. I'm talking about a man that got everything, the man that we need. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. The man that I want to hear the Lord say, Hi. I'm taking you, man. Woo, Lord have mercy. I'm taking you higher, higher. I'm taking you to the top. And I believe God said about a year ago, He was elevating you to the top. And all you got to do is just keep your hand in God. Because God said, I'm going to bless you like never before. And I'm going to, we ain't going to have to walk for nothing. Because I heard the Spirit say, I got your back. I got your back. And all you got to do is that way, God, and watch and see your God in this way. God said, I'm filling the house, too. I'm going to fill the house. He said, I said about a year ago, I'm going to fill the house. He's going to fill the house up. And all you got to do is go ahead over to the thank you. Go ahead over to the thank you.